All right, see if we're live. Waiting for video. Uh, it's still All right, yeah. welcome to the Hammer, the Games Workshop uh, Warhammer show. Yeah, today we're going to be talking about uh, tower releases, everything you need to know to uh, one-click bundles, and uh, talking a bit about High Elves. So uh, joining me as always, he's the lead painter of Toxic Painting. He is also the co-host of Albros. It's, uh, it's Toxic. How are you doing, buddy? Yeah, pretty good, pretty good. Looking pretty slick with that uh, no buttons there. <laughs> yeah, thanks. <laughs> yep, no problem. And uh, also, joining us for what, like, this is your fifth show now? Yeah, fifth or sixth, yeah. I think. Yeah, yeah you're, you're the twelfth doctor, and uh, you got a sweet hat trying to be better than me, I see. <laughs> it's Seb. How you doing? Yeah, I'm do do doing good. Seven hells. Looking forward to do some town. Okay, just just for me, can you can you can you uh, say uh, piss on that? Piss on that. Yes. Seven L's, lad. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So um, yeah. I didn't, I, I didn't even try to beat anyone with my head. <laughs> <laughs> I'm saving this for when we need it. I yeah, shouldn't push right. my luck on such things. <laughs> so uh, yeah. Let's, uh, I guess, let's get right into it. So, uh, Tau Codex being released, uh, we talked a bit about the rules and stuff like that. They're definitely being a better shooting army. Uh, some of the things we said were, uh, rules rumored, you know, other than some points updates, uh, new units, uh, Overwatch rule. Is there any, is there anything else we need to talk about rules-wise that might stick out for, uh, the Tau Empire? Not massive, just lots of big, big shooty, and lots and lots of options, I think, is the main thing. Yeah, instead of them saying, man, we should maybe train them in hand-to-hand -hand combat, we should make more guns. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, some new some new prototype guns. Yeah. I mean, Toxic, so what, what do you think? You, you're, you're kind of, you're, you, sound, you sound a little disappointed sometimes when we, when we talk about this, about this new Yeah, one. I mean, I really like the Tal models. I mean, they're beautiful. I think they're probably one of the only ranges that I can think of that I there's there's really nothing in there that I can that I don't like. But you know, I don't want to play an army that my only thing is is I deploy as far back as I can and I have to shoot you by the time you get to me. You know, that sounds kind of boring, right? And, and I and I really can't see anything in the kind of like the I don't know if they have really leaked rules, but what people kind of make out from the White Dwarf, I can't really see anything in there that's going to change my mind. Yeah, de def definitely. I mean, um, that they're always the shooting army, and it kind of it's it's a hit or miss because some people will absolutely love the fact that they have superior shooting, but at the same time, you know, you play something like uh, Dark Angels, for example, and you have the option of the Raven Wing, the Death Wing. You can play a bit more like a Space Marine chapter, but these guys they they shoot, and it's just whether you shoot with Fire Warriors or you shoot with battle suits. Yeah, like I, I play Imperial God a lot as well, and they're another shooty army. But I feel like even they have a bit more variety when it comes to, uh, you know, even being able to close combat. They're better than Tau. Yeah. yeah. I mean, what 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 about you, Seb? Is uh, if you were if you were joining now, would would Tau be an army you would want to play? Well, they're very tempting. I think Sarah's a bit more excited about them than I am, though the orange. But the, yeah, the big mechs and things. It's all pretty awesome, but I've always been a heretic at heart, to be fair. I like uh, getting stuck in. Uh, quick question from chat room. Have the Kroot been removed from the Tau? Uh, the answer... The real the real answer is uh, we don't know exactly. They're not included as much as they used to be, because they're still selling the Kroot. Uh, rumors have been that they are actually making specific Kroot ally book, possibly, or an allies book on special ways you can bring in the crew, but I think they're still in the book, as far as we know. Yeah, they're still in the, the troop section of uh, Games Workshop's website, so that's a good sign that they're still there. Yeah, and usually they're pretty good about taking down that stuff, like um, like uh, they took down the hammerhead because they're getting a new plastic kit or something. They did that in about two seconds. So, All right, so uh, let's talk about if you are buying Tau. We got the one-click bundle which is all the new stuff that you can get. Uh, how much is that running you currently if you were to buy the one-click bundle? That's uh, three, $304.50. 182 pounds. 
182 pounds. Now, Toxic, we know you love these one-click bundles. You know, I... I do like them. Uh, I think they're a great idea. I like the fact that they have the armies from the battle reports in the White Dwarf. If you like that, you can just come straight on the site and buy it. Uh, I like the options that they give you. They display it really well. What I don't like is that they are just everything put together with the same price tag on it, and they kind of bundle it to make it look like it's a deal. But really all they do is bundle it so it's easy for you to buy, I guess. Uh, it, they present it a little bit better so you, you can kind of get a feel for what you're buying. But you know, other than the price being the same, I actually do like them. I think they're a really good idea. Yeah, you know, it's, it's kind of nice because if, if somebody is either coming back to 40k or it's not an army they're paying attention to, they're like, oh, what's exactly new that's coming out? And then they can look at this. This is all the updates. I mean... They save us a few clicks, so maybe maybe we should be happy. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, Seb, you're 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 kind of the the new the new one out of all of us. I mean, is this is this a smart or is this kind of a, a misleading business move with these one click bundles? I mean, I, well, I think it's both of the, both of those things. It's very smart because you might think you're getting it cheap, um, and it's easy to grab the lot, but it it's a bit insidious when when each time we work it out and it's exactly the same. Yeah, all right. So, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I guarantee you, if they, if Space Wolf came out with a codex next month, you know, obviously I'm not saying they are because they're not. But if they did and they had a bundle that had all the new stuff and the codex, you know, I'm going to buy it because I'm going to buy all the new stuff anyway, and it's going to save me a couple clicks and it's going to add it all to my cart. You know, I'm not saving anything, but <laughs> and now that's the only time I'm really going to buy one. All right, so. Uh... Let's let's move on to some of the other uh, one-click bundles. So this is the super expensive one. I believe this is the army they use in a uh, white dwarf. I believe uh, you said Seb because you somehow have a white dwarf now. Yeah. Or is it because England just gets it earlier? Uh, it came out on Saturday over here. I'm not sure how that works for you guys. Yeah, we might be getting it sometime soon, but uh. <laughs> yeah, was was this was this the uh, army they used in the uh, battle report? Yeah, the uh, the really nice blue with the light blue uh, detail. Yeah, that was the army used. Yeah. So uh, what what are you getting there? It looks like uh, a lot of fire warriors. You get uh, Commander Shadow Sun, who's one of the named characters. You get quite a few battle suits, and you get the new Riptide, which is nice in the flyer. Uh, now. Is this would this be something that Games Workshop should be doing? Like, hey, we got these these armies in the battle report. You actually saw how they played. Is this something you would want to buy? Toxic? Do you think this is a bit better of this would be a bit better of a selling tactic or a more? Yeah, it's it's an amazing idea. It's I, I, I was really pleased to see it done because you know if you're new and you see that and you like that that army, or if you're experienced and you like that army. You know, it's right there for you. You don't need to go to your white dwarf and be like, okay, so they have this unit and that unit. I mean, at the end of the day, all it's doing is saving you time. Uh, it would be good if they gave you something, you know, some sort of discount for buying all of that at once. But, you know, they're not going to. But, I mean, I like the idea of, you know, it's it's a good way to sell models. You know, you, just, you show it off in this army list, and now there's a bundle that you can buy it all in. Yeah, I mean, uh, Seb... Is is this is this something that that you you think is a bit better? I mean, something that a lot of people think with White Dwarf is a lot of the battle reports are rigged, but like they kind of you know whichever book came out would obviously be the winner and they'd kind of dominate. And then they were like, oh, you want to buy that army and win? Here you go. I mean, well, that is kind of fairly what happened. <laughs> they <laughs> shot everything to pieces in the battle report. So, so, but it, it, it it's nice to see it in action. Um, you've put the fear into me now that it's fixed. But yeah, it's nice. It, it, there's a force that you can buy that you can see how someone's played it. But also with all the new models, there's so many, many, many options that if you bought that set, you don't have to have it exactly as it is there. There's many things you could do. Right, definitely. Yeah, like like the the battle reports are more likely, you know set to, you know, how how the game's going to play out, someone's going to win, but 
I mean, so is wrestling, and that's still kind of entertaining to watch. Oh yeah, definitely. <laughs> when definitely. I was twelve. <laughs> yeah, and I think I think we were talking uh, earlier how uh, how that seems to be less of the case with the new white dwarves. How it it definitely seemed a lot more uh, rigged before, and now now in the new white dwarves, they definitely seem a bit more more like a real game. Like they don't bother to like do all the fancy Photoshop. They're like they just take pictures of the table, and that's the game. The, the game itself in this one was quite interesting because they actually had some Death Watch uh, Space Marines holding the objective and they allowed all the Tyranid troops to just constantly re- respawn from reserve. So they had an interesting aspect to that game. Yeah, I'm, I'm actually looking forward to, uh, to uh, picking this up. So uh, the next one we got is the Crude Bundle. Oh, uh... Actually, to back up a second, this uh, this this wonderful army here will set you back seven hundred and twelve dollars and seventy five cents. Which is oh, where's it going? What's that in England? <laughs> in England pounds. money. Oh, four hundred and twenty eight pounds how sterling. Much that, how much is that in shillings? <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yes, four hundred and twenty eight uh, and a halfpenny. Yep, seven hundred and twelve dollars and seventy five cents. And how many? How much was that in pounds? One more time. Uh, four hundred and twenty-eight pounds. So yeah, it's it's kind of. And how many points was this? This is probably two thousand points, right? Uh, I'm not sure. It's, it's quite. It's definitely bigger than a, normal, a, a little battle. So yeah, it must be at least two thousand. Yeah, it's kind of amazing when you think about it. It's like wow, we almost drop a thousand dollars just to play this game at high points. All right, so uh, recruit mer- mercenaries. This is. I think uh, the cheaper of the uh, bundles. I mean, no- nothing, nothing her- terribly exciting. I don't think a lot of people are are super excited about the crew with all this new uh, shiny uh, battle suit stuff. I mean, toxic. Do you do you, do you think that the crew are even a thing anymore? That people are even excited for the crew anymore? Yeah, I think they are. I think there's a lot of people that like Crude, and I'm surprised Games Workshop hasn't noticed that. Like, every time we mention Crude, people are like, yeah, I want to see a Crude army. And there's just a lot of people I talk to that really like the Crude. When I played Tau, I had two huge squads of them. They were useless. They would never won me games. They were just crap. And they're, they're kind of like an assault unit, but they had rapid-fire guns, so that didn't really make sense. But I liked them. The models were amazing, you know. They're pretty old model, but they still look really nice. I think people are excited for them. I'm surprised they haven't, you know, got something by now. Yeah, Seb, what about you? You, uh, if if you were if you were buying Tau, I mean, with all this all these new battle suits and stuff, I mean, you look at all these these bundles, and this is the only thing that includes the crew. They don't even come in the battalion box anymore. Do you do you? I mean, are are you still interested in the crew? Yeah, the crew seem kind of cool. I think the the, the vest bit in, in, uh, intrigued me a little bit more. I think with that. Yeah, oh yeah, I, d- I didn't, even, I didn't even remember those. <laughs> but yeah, I definitely saw there's a p- at least one picture of them in the codex. But um, yeah, if you're buying all the battle suits and getting everything ready, I don't think crew's gonna be the first thing on your agenda. But once you've already thrown down any a thousand bucks, <laughs> yeah, I was always really disappointed at the vest bit and how small they were. Yeah, you know, there's still some uh, Vespid uh, metal blisters at my local store. Anyways, I hope I switched out this picture. I forgot to change it, so if this is a random thing from Fox and the Dragon, I apologize. No, it is the battle suit bundle, thank God. Okay. So this is another one-click thing if you want to get the battle suits. I mean, oh, the uh, the Kroot, man, I'm bad at this. The Kroot uh, bundle will put you back uh, 97.25. 97.25 for all that Kroot. 59.70 sterling. And shillings and florins. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yep, battle suit bundle. So it looks like you got um, you're quite a bit. Is that uh, yeah, that's Shadow Sun as well. Um, I mean, I think a lot of people who uh, are playing Tau, if we showed them those two bundles, it's just kind of like, well, I kind of want the battle suits. <laughs> you know what I mean? Definitely, so, it's the way to go. So, I mean, you're you're getting a lot of new stuff. You're getting the uh, the new plastic. Uh, Stealth suits. It looks like you're getting the tank character. You're getting uh, Commander Shadow Sun. You're getting the Riptide. You're getting a new broadside. You're getting a handful of new Crisis suits, and you're getting uh, Farsight. Yeah, the the kind of odd thing I see is that they have the old stealth suits in there. Uh, weren't they uh, weren't they metal before? 
The well, the new style suits have been out for like since the last edition of a uh, Tau. Um, the the ones at the top left, they're the old style suits that were originally out when Tau came out. The ones next to them, right, they they've been out since the other Codex. Uh, those style suits. So it's kind of weird that they put both the stealth suits in there. Yeah, and I mean, uh... and then you got the tank commander there just. Chilling on the, the yeah is, far left. is is that the tank commander? Am I actually correct? As far as I can tell, it's the tank commander. Yeah, because he looks kind of strange and less. Yeah, he's, he's, he needs to go in the turret. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, at least uh, this way you get all your special characters, right? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's a penny eff- effective bundle. Yeah, this uh, this one will set you back. I think how much was it? This yeah, one I just don't s- like the fact that they have the old stealth suits in there. Why would I want to buy a bundle that has old models in there? Because maybe some people like old models. I guess it's a one-click collection. It's not yeah. like, you know... But I, I don't know. That's just my opinion. Is like, well, I, I'd rather just buy everything separately and not buy those uh, <laughs> those uh, old suits. Yep. I can understand that. So this will set you back uh, $413, and that's actually something I kind of wanted to... T- to talk about if we knew anything new about it because, uh, you know, we talk about 40k named characters and characters in general focus on how you play your army. Do we do we know anything about any perks that uh, Shadow Sun or the Tank Commander or uh, Farsight? I've I've been hearing rumors that Farsight allows you to take suits as a troop's choice. <laughs> have, have we heard anything on that? Uh, um, I haven't. Has Seb? Seb, you haven't heard anything? Nothing since since those rumors were. There's nothing, been nothing more solid on that. But it, it looks that way. That's what the way a lot of the army's been going. So you, I would imagine so. All right. So um, so yeah. I guess uh, so. This will set you back what four hundred thirteen dollars. I think for all these uh, battle suits, which is I would like to say it's a good deal, but it's the exact same <laughs> thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Two hundred forty eight pounds. The Riptide looks sexy if you're into small heads. <laughs> yeah, the, the small head is very odd. Small heads, big bodies. See, I don't know why, man. I think I am, I'm really tempted to start a Tau army and just paint them all purple and be, make it like Invader Zim Urkin army because the, the, the Riptide just reminds me of that giant suit where he was just in Operation Appending Doom 1 and he was like destroying his own planet and he didn't even know it. <laughs> I didn't even see the head. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. One thing I want to ask, with all the, the drones and stuff, um, with, the, with the flyers and the devilfish and stuff, are they, what, before, were they attachable and detachable, or is, or is that a brand new thing? Because that's kind of cool, that you can kit them out appropriately or for each battle. Wait, I'm sorry, say that again? Uh, the, the drones, like, with, with, with the tanks and the, the flyers, you can... Uh, clip them in and clip them out um, as you want. Yeah, I so believe so. Things yeah, them. that's always been like that. Yeah, it's always been like that. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, uh, anything, anything else about the uh, the Tau before we move on to uh, to my fantasy rant? And I'm sure maybe <laughs> maybe one person's interested in. Um, I don't know. Get them painted through me. I'll give you twenty percent discount on painting if it's a Tau army. <laughs> oh yeah, definitely. I and trust me, I use toxic painting, so it's it's a good deal. I can also do 20% off the models if you haven't already brought the models. Oh, so. damn. That's that's yeah. pretty good, guys. So, uh, yeah, if you want to put a link to Toxic Painting, the okay. chat room, definitely. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to, uh, I'm now going to uh, rant a bit about uh, fantasy. So, uh, if all you 40k exclusives want to go, but uh, first off, just want to just wanna point out that uh, we had this, this image on our Tumblr blog before any of the other major blogs. Let's, <laughs> let's just take a moment to appreciate that. So, um, so yeah, High Elves, definitely very excited for it personally. I'm just going to go over some, uh, some rumors real quick, which is, uh, yeah, obviously, uh, new Phoenix models. These guys, uh, these guys are pretty, pretty cool from what, what I read. Basically, they go around and they, uh, they, uh, drop templates on anyone they fly over. There's also a Fire and Frost. I have no idea what the rules will do, but, uh, they also have, uh, Phoenix Guard on top of it. So, uh, yep, new models for those. Definitely, definitely excited for those. Um, another unit has been rumored, which is uh, Great Eagle towing, t- uh, towing Chariots, which uh, possibly have repeat bolt throwers on them. 
uh, very unfortunate for uh, Wood Elf players. I know I was talking to uh, to Jamie the other day because that was one of the huge rumors is that the uh, Wood Elves were going to have a, a Toad chariot carrying something, but uh, apparently that was for High Elves, not Wood Elves. So Wood Elves <laughs> probably won't get another rewrite till uh, 2015. So 15 years they haven't had a Codex update. That'll be that'll be interesting. Um, a new character who's a, a high mage of Hoeth, who's basically a bit like a warrior mage. He's going to be interesting because he gets all the signature uh, spells from the eight lores, which is going to be interesting. Uh, Silver Helms are moved to a core choice, which is actually really nice. Um, Martial Prowess across the board. That, For those of you who don't know, they get to fight an extra rank. Uh, magic Bows on the Archers. Uh, sword Masters. Water Bows. Hmm? I think there might be Water Bows. Water Bows? Something like that? Mm. That would be cool. Yeah. <laughs> Um, Swordmasters get a parry save against shooting, which is good because I kind of thought Swordmasters are kind of the iffy ones right now because they don't have any sort of a save against shooting when Phoenix Guard just have a four, four up uh, ward save. So that mean they get their Jedi Master on? Yeah, they do. They so. pretty much. Well, I mean, when you think about it, <laughs> they can it, deflect bullets with their blade. Yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. Like I cut mean. them in half as it's coming towards them, and just like. Yeah. Well, I mean, the the way the way they they're supposed to be wielding those things, they can literally, you know, get like five cuts in before a single man can, you know, stab them with a sword type thing. So you know, they could just kind of keep swinging them around and hope that uh one deflects it. I mean, it's still a six up save. Yep. Windmilling elves. Yep. Elves elves get uh Jedi masters. That's uh that's the new unit or the new upgrade to the unit. Uh, what else we got? Uh, new Shadow Warrior models. Hopefully they make the Shadow Warriors not suck anymore. Um, let's see what else. The thing I'm excited for is you just kind of wrote Everqueen on here. And that's in the Note 7. That's something that's kind of been like, oh my god, what do you mean by Everqueen? Are we getting an Everqueen model? Are we getting Everqueen rules? Because the Everqueen's kind of a big fucking deal with the High Elves. I'm, oops, I said fuck. Oops, I said fuck. Oops. Okay. <laughs> I mean, that's 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 kind of a that's kind of a big deal. That's kind of a huge thing for lore because all you know, all the main races, you know, have their their leader to an extent to play. But the high elves have never had uh, never had someone you know to play as their their faction leader. And the ever queen, uh, kind of interesting uh, to those who don't know the uh, the high elf fluff. But basically, the ever queen is the actual ruler of the high elves. And the whole point of the king is to control mer- uh, to control the military aspect and, you know, to keep the nobles under control. But the Everqueen's the one in charge, and the Everqueen's just supposed to provide a daughter for the Everqueen, so then that daughter can be the Everqueen. So it's kind of a reversed role in how they work uh, their society. So it would be kind of interesting. So uh, do we know anything, Seb, or did you just write Everqueen to... Right, drum roll, please. What we know is... Hang on. What was there? Hang on. Unfortunately, they literally just mentioned... Uh, I, I I can't give you anything more concrete, but uh, but as soon as I know more, I will let you know, and I will chatter up. Okay, because because that, that's 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 a big deal fluff wise if they uh, allow you to play that, and I possibly am probably gonna buy that model. Uh, let's see what else we got for high elf rumors. Uh, we got we already mentioned flying chariots, um, possibly a universal elven rule. I think that's. That's kind of cool, I guess, but at the same time, I I, I, I do like the uh, distinction between all of them. Uh, sword Masters can stand stance, so kind of like War Dancers, basically War Dancers, they get to pick uh, at the start of their game what kind of dance they do. You know, it can give them an extra attack, it can give them a ward save, it can give them uh, re-rolls to hit or something like that, but basically Sword Masters will get some sort of ability like that. Uh, Always Strike First is removed, but we all kind of saw that coming because it's kind of useless, this addition. Um, yeah, and that's uh, that's pretty much it for uh, for High Elf Rumors. I will possibly be doing an in-depth uh, d- Dance Dance Evolution. I like that. But um, I'll, I'll be I'll be doing an in-depth look of the overall book for those who are who are interested in fantasy for the few viewers that are. So, um, yeah, is there, you. yeah, yeah, pr- j- pretty much just me talking to myself because you know that's what I do. I just record myself talking about fantasy and I just listen to it on my iPod on my way to work. I'm just like, yeah, yeah, I like that. 
So uh, anything else, any other uh, rumors or anything we should bring up? Uh, well, the, and unless we go back to go on to it, there's the Conex release order speculation. Oh right, right, okay. So uh, let's let's list what's uh, what's listed uh, lined up. So we got High Elves after Tau uh, in May, yeah. for May. We got Eldar in June. July should be a new edition of Apocalypse. A lot of people are interested in that. August Lizardmen. September Blood Bowl. Well, it, it's mystery box, but it's pres- presumed possibly Blood Bowl. New edition of Blood Bowl Toxic. What's that? New edition of Blood Bowl for uh, September. Yeah, I don't know. I can't really uh, take that rumor seriously because every time there's a mystery box, I, I'm like the rumors get it wrong. It's it's going to be Dreadfleet too, right? <laughs> well, like no one had Dreadfleet in the rumors that I can remember when that mystery box came out. Everyone was thinking like other stuff, and then Dreadfleet came out, and everyone's like, "Well, you know, damn." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Warhammer Quest is also a possible for that. Yeah. But uh, that's speculative. Alright, so October Space Marines, November Dwarves, December more Hobbit stuff, and January of next year Tyranids. So, uh, yeah. I'm, uh... I mean, we haven't really been wrong so far. I'm just gonna well, say that. There are lots of sources definitely saying May, June, July, High Elves, Apocalypse, Elder. That looks fairly certain. And Space Marines is the last one. Tyranids for the first one of next year. Look pretty solid. Yeah, I know. I know Space Marines is gonna be a uh, a pretty controversial uh, codex when that comes out. Maybe. People, oh, I can't wait. <laughs> yeah, yeah. People like if there's gonna be one mention of Ultramarines at all, people are gonna be like, "Oh, they love Ultramarines again." God, it just like it's just like a sentence that says Ultramarine in it, and then just people are like, "Look at all that favoritism." <laughs> I mean, they give us the option to play other chapters fairly well, but we're still gonna complain about Ultramarines. <laughs> are we? Uh, are we taking bets on uh, if Ultramarines are gonna be on the cover? Because I'm actually still willing to put money down, and Ultramarines not gonna be on cover of Space Marines. Crimson Fist. Yeah, I'm going to take a guess it's going to be Crimson Fist. Seb, are, are you in? You want to put in a floor in for this? Oh, well, I'd, I'd, it'd be nice to see one that hasn't already been on there yet. That'd be nice. Have uh, have Crimson <laughs> Fist been on one already? Yeah, Crimson Fist has been on them before. Maybe maybe Imperial Fist. It'd be cool if it was Salamanders. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Cause I Can must... I actually have a limited edition scaly cover? <laughs> yeah. Crimson Fist. They've also... Black Templars and Sisters of Battle have been mentioned here and there, but there's still possibilities, and Orcs as well. But Oh, what if they put Black Templars on it and they're just like, we're not making Black Templars anymore? <laughs> Imagine. The, the problem I have with Salamand is is uh, everyone complains about uh, Ultramarines, but Salamanders were kind of the cheese list for Space Marines in 5th edition. Yeah. I, I know yeah. a lot of people because because everyone takes melters and thunder hammers and then you have this HQ that gives you mastercrafted thunder hammers and twin link melter guns. Yeah, and that well, kind of just you know slipped under there. No one really complained about salamanders, but they were really kind of the cheese space marine list running in there in fifth edition. Yeah, well, what what can you say? There's there's the 40k fans and then there's the 40k fandom. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yeah, I. Uh, you know what? Maybe maybe I'll change mine to Salamander. No, I'm going to go with Crimson Fist, because I'm just so sure. I just have a gut feeling it's going to be Crimson Fist. Because I, I have a feeling they're going to focus on successor chapters with this one. Strong focus on successor chapters. Fair play. Yeah. Toxic. You want, you want to come at me, bro? <laughs> come at you for what? <laughs> <laughs> I was kind of. Re- I was reading the chat. I can't oh, I, what you said. Uh, I, I was going to say the the Space Marine book is going to focus on successor chapters. I don't want to argue with that. It'd be good if that happened. <laughs> I I want that to happen. No, argue with me. Argue with me for the sake of the show. No, okay. All right. So uh, yeah, I think uh, I think that concludes. Uh, anything else you guys want to talk about? Warhammer related. Real quick before we go, oh, but, or before we. You want to mention the limited edition Tau Codex? Oh have yeah. An argument about that. Oh. I totally forgot. Okay, so limited edition Tau Codex. It it probably sucks the least out of all the limited editions that come out. I mean, what 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 do we Does think? It? It's got cool artwork on it. You got a cool sleeve. But you're paying twice the price for a cool sleeve. <laughs> like this is that's just madness. 
Yeah. yeah. At, at least it doesn't come with the envelope that says you are Shazo, bro. You know? <laughs> yeah, but that, that 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 seems like a negative thing to me cuz I'm paying the same price for less now. I don't even get an envelope. I don't even get a letter. <laughs> <laughs> are are you disappointed? Did did you did you buy the collector's edition of the Dark Angels? Be mad, stay mad, bro. <laughs> No, I, I just wanted to point out one thing from that pitch you got up there is that uh, why, you know, they got this new codex and they're using old artwork. Like they they turn to the page with the old artwork, you know, show off some new stuff. I I I can kind of see why they do it just because it's it's that kind of retro feel to it. I mean, <laughs> I think you should have your tin foil on for that, mate. <laughs> oh, all right. I'm gonna put my put my tin foil on it. Okay. Are you ready? Aliens. Xenos. <laughs> yeah, so, uh... <laughs> collector's Edition. So, yeah, Collector's Edition. Uh, probably, in my opinion, it, it sucks the least out of all of them. And I just realized on the side it says Tau Codex. <laughs> I just That's realized. what it is. I just uh, I'm glad you noticed that. Yeah, I I actually noticed that. I'm like, huh, that actually looks like a word. I mean, <laughs> the I mean, thing with the limited editions is, you just got to think: would you buy that stuff separately for the price? Like, that's thirty quid. That's like fifty dollars for just for that sleeve. No, <laughs> madness. Yeah. Piss on that. P- piss, piss on that. So yeah, we're she we're saying one thing, she tells me another. <laughs> yeah. So we're saying we're saying that uh, it's lame. Universal agreement. It, it's cool, but lame for the money. Yeah. Okay. It should. Yeah. It, it's it's definitely it's like it's a beautiful book. It's it's you know, but you're paying like double the price for a sleeve. Yeah. Yeah. It should at it's least in a wizard sleeve. Yeah. It should. Uh... <laughs> a, wi- a wizard sleeve. Yeah. I mean, it should come with like a model or something. Jeez. Yeah. That, that'll never happen. Ah ha ah, ah. ha. Games Workshop. Well, even just the little tank commander guy, they should be a slightly different tank commander. Yeah. <laughs> Give him some shoulder pads or something at least, man. <laughs> Alright, so uh, anything else that I forgot, Seb? <laughs> or Toxic, whoever mentioned that to me? Uh, no, I can't really think of anything. Uh, just the things that are coming up next week. Yep. Alright, all so quite a few announcements for uh, for Dice Troop itself, so I'm going to try and remember all of them. Okay, so first off, um, Fox and the Dragon is cancelled for now. We will not be doing it on Thursday. However, I am planning to be doing some separate video reviews on other games. I already have a few lined up. One is the uh, Battlestar Galactica board game. I have uh, Game of Thrones card game. I have Warhammer Invasion. I am currently looking into a... Um, uh, pen and paper RPG called Savage World, so I'm going to be doing a lot of uh, a lot of that extra stuff that's not Warhammer related and and all that. So uh, I got some fun things planned. Um, also, with that in mind, I will say that this is going to be my last time actually hosting the Hammer. Um, Toxic will now be the person who is in charge of doing the uh, doing the actual stream. I think someone's trying to get my attention. Chat room. So Toxic will be in charge of. Uh, Hosting the stream, he will now be guiding the conversation. Seb will still be here helping him out. Uh, so toxic. Who? What? what are, are who's who's going to be the uh, third panel? Uh, at the moment, I'm trying to work it so Savage can come in and uh, do the show with us. Uh, if that doesn't work, well, I'll have to kind of reach out and see who else I can uh, bring on. But so far, that's kind of the direction I'm going. Yep, and with that in mind, also the time of the hammer will be changing once again. So uh, they're talking Saturday. Um, we're also going to probably try moving around some uh, times for filming shows because I know a lot of people are from all over the the globe who watch us. So uh, we're going to be trying to do inconsistent times on purpose. So maybe if you miss one week, you can watch it the next kind of thing. So um, what else? What else? Oh, um, another announcement. We have a new show in the works called uh, called Table Talks, which is going to be hosted by Corruption Points. Who uh, who runs a very very popular pen and paper blog? Uh, I'll be working pretty closely with him. Uh, that's going to be airing sometime next week. 
uh, we'll be doing a lot of uh, hype and talk like that. We're going to talk about like our favorite RP characters. It's gonna it's gonna be a lot of fun. So uh, keep your keep your ears out for that. So um, I think and that's all the announcements we have for uh, well, Dice Fluff Talk. Yep. Fluff Talk coming next week. Yep. Yep. So, Fluff Talk coming on Thursday. So what, what are you talking <laughs> about on uh, Fluff Talk? Yeah. So we're going to be looking at we myself, Brett, and Toxic, and looking at the Blood Angel successor chapters uh, that we're going to be looking at in Black Vault as well uh, for Red Fury. So yeah, come along, get involved. Blood Angel successor chapters, Lamenters, Flesh Terrors, and the whole lot. Uh, yeah, information and opinion. So hopefully a lot of interaction with the chat room and stuff. Yeah, and uh, Toxic, what, what what do you have plans for uh, Dice Troop? Uh, it. Today is another lunch hammer Monday, so uh, get your stuff posted. We've got three more Mondays for that. Uh, we have yeah another Battle Bros episode this week. Uh, we hopefully we having we're gonna talk to Corruption Points on that uh, about why he stopped playing Warhammer at Sixth Edition. Um, and yeah, that's about it. Kind of kind of slow for me. I want to yeah. I want to get some more. Uh, tactics with toxic up so if you have anything any questions any tactics you want me to go over send them to me i got ta i got tactics how do you deal when everything's terminators <laughs> okay i'll do that <laughs> really you'll, you'll do it you'll do it what if everything was terminators yeah if you're busting it i mean that's not a silly like convers like a thing because you have space wolves dark angels gray knights you know that's three armies right there that can feel all terminators Mm -hmm. So that's that's a legit thing. <laughs> uh, next Black Vault subject, uh, Seb. Uh, we're doing the second half of the Blood Angel saga, so that's Red Fury and Black Tide, mm -hmm. and then the one after that will be Path of the Elder. I'm looking at the Elder. But people have been getting uh, involved. Uh, Corner Pin Up Bear uh, wants to get involved when there's some Imperial Guard and some other stuff. So, yeah, nice to hear from you. Maybe get some guests on and some lively chat. Yeah, definitely. So and Black uh, Vault is seventeenth of April. So yes, yeah. uh, one one more announcement I need to make. Uh, we also uh, here at Dice Troop, you know, we're a non-profit organization. Are we? An or yeah, we're an organization. Uh, we run everything on donations. Uh, we put a lot of time and money into this. Uh, if you go to our Tumblr page at the bottom, there's a donate button. If there's anything you can donate, you know, a buck, two bucks, you know, anything that could help us is greatly appreciated. Uh, and to those who have already donated, I thank you very, very much, out of the kindness of my heart. It's very nice. So um, that'll be it for this episode of The Hammer. We'll be back to uh, talk with chat room. So uh, we'll see you guys later. Tell it bye-bye.